and then head to the lawns then, and that was just wait and see what, what was going on, like, you know. Chat, we'd go out and to the cider farm, get some cider and turn out on the seafront. You'd have coach loads of brummies and Bristol kids or whatever, like you know, they'd all come down having a, having, having a drink themselves and we'd be shouting things across, they'd be doing the same and then we'd just go through the middle. Until the law come along or whatever, and we usually be the ones that get arrested because the police knew us, like so. We'd be the ones that arrested and they'd usually get away with everything. <laughs> Sixteen news appeared before Western Super Mayor magistrates this morning and fines of up to £300 have been imposed. Getting fined that much is going to make them go out and nick stuff and sell it to pay off their fines. A lot of the lads did uh, time, they did got like, Borstal, etc, etc. Me, me, I was lucky, I had a good, I had a full-time job at the time and I just pay, ended up paying up thousands of pounds in fines to know the years. I'd love to know where it went. I think the best one was, um, there must have been 50, 60 of us over on the bingo steps opposite the amusements. We all decided that we're going to go down to the um, Smith's Hotel where all the brummy skinheads were. There's about 100 of them down there. And uh, we met, in, met up with these 10 or 15 Bristol blokes, 20 Bristol blokes, whatever, and uh, decided that we were going to do the Brummies together. So we all steamed into Smith's Hotel, kicked the crap out of the Brummies, and on the way back along the beach, we kicked the shit out of the Bristol blokes. And that's when the police were chasing us along the beach on horses. The police started quite a fair bit of the trouble, I'd say. Going in too heavy. Even on days when nothing happened, the old bill would be there pushing, and I'm not talking about just us, I'm talking about ordinary pedestrians on the street, like, you know, pushing them all along the seafront to try and get them over onto the beach. Everyone was piling over the wall because the police was trying to push everyone away from the sea, from the seafront to get them on here, out the way. So uh, that's when we all jumped over the walls and whatever. They had a, like, all the Bristol lot was behind the police and they segregated both lots. So uh, that's how come we ended up on here, that fateful day. It was really terrifying for everybody, for, um, for the donkeys, the horses, and all the public with their little kiddies. They come on the beaches, they come about 400 at a time, and they would just make one run all the way and scream and shout. I put it down to the police, they used to send them down on the beach to take the trouble off the streets up, you know, where all the pubs were and that. The bank holidays used to spoil it. I mean, obviously the fighting used to spoil it for a lot of people. There was victimisation from the police. I mean, in them days, we were basically sheep ready to be herded up by them. We was out of order sometimes with them, and we did have the occasional scuffle with them, but uh, most, most of the time they just, they just, just loved picking on us. Because they basically had nothing else to do. Then there was a lot of, a lot of bad feeling between us and the police. It, it didn't just happen in the summer. I mean, we got victimised in the winter. Uh, when there weren't the honey holiday makers around. They did enjoy picking on us and they knew that we never used to give up much of a fight in court and they, we just processed basically.